We have a JMT leaf brake. This is a 10 foot 16 gauge leaf brake. Some of the features of this machine are, you know, this is your, your clamping lever to open and close your, your upper beam or your upper leaf. You can see this opens the jaws allowing you to install and remove material. Okay, to make adjustments on the uh, leaf brake when you're uh, getting ready to bend, you need to adjust the machine for the proper gauge of material that you'll be bending. Uh, if this isn't set properly, it, you can put unnecessary pressure or force on the lip of your upper beam and you can sometimes bend it if that were the case and you want to avoid that. Um, to adjust the beam properly, if you, if you look here, I'm going to move this back a little bit so you can actually see the bending point which is, is right here and then your leaf edge or your leaf lip is, is set back. In this case it's back about an eighth of an inch right now which is for most materials we'll be bending it is farther than you'd want it to be. But So we want to show you how to make that adjustment so it's proper for the material you'll be bending. Um, there's two adjustments that you'll make. You need to make one vertically and then you may need to make one horizontally this direction. So if you walk around the side of the machine here you'll we'll do the vertical first. Okay there's a a jack screw right here which allows you to, to move this beam up and down this way by un unlocking these two nuts and you'll you want to just unlock it. You, you'll want it to touch here but you don't want it locked down tight. So you, you just loosen this up and then loosen these two nuts and then adjust it according to your material that you're going to be putting in there. You'll have your material in here with this down in, in position touching the material and then adjust this so that um, you get the proper locking uh, pressure when you bring the handle down. So that will adjust you vertically. Now you're going to want to do this adjustment on both ends of the machine to get a proper bend for your material. Okay, after you do the vertical, you'll come back here to, to make your, your beam slide forward and backwards because you want the distance from the lip of the upper beam and the actual bending point to be the thickness of your, of your material. So first you'll unlock this screw right here on the side. Now this screw here, as you screw it in or out, will move this beam forward and backwards. So first I'll, I'll move this so you can see how you can adjust it. It's pretty simple. This way it's moving it back and as you, if you move it the, this direction it'll move the beam forward. So maybe we'll walk around the front here and you'll be able to see the actual movement here a little bit. You can, you can see the distance here that we've got. So as we screw this one direction you can see it moving back and as we move it the other direction you can see it moving forward which will allow you to adjust it for your material thickness. Now again you want to make sure that this distance between here and here is the same on both ends of your machine. If they're different from each other, whichever edge is closer will cause the, the material to over bend on that end. So you want to make sure that they're equal on both sides. So that's how you adjust for different uh, gauges and thicknesses of material. We've also got this um, angle bolted to the front which gives you leverage for bending thicker materials. If you're going to be doing back bends or offset bends in a piece of material that are not very far from each other, this can be removed which will give you the smaller distance in here for back bends that needed to be done. If you also, if you look here, we've got an angle gauge which allows you to do repeatability on your your bends. You can see in the arrow here pointing to your different um, angles that you're bending at. Now if you're going to be doing repeated bends, you've got an angle adjustment rod right here. And you can see we've got, got a device down here to clamp it so as soon as you determine the bend that you're going to want, you can undo these two bolts, move them forward to this position and lock them in place, allowing you to, to do repeated bends over and over again. Um, without having to look at your gauge. We've also got here, these are counterweights that allow you, depending on the length of material and thickness of material you'll be bending, it they'll give you some extra 
force to, to bend the material. As you do thinner material, you may want to move this down so there's not so much counterweight um, force going backwards on you. And as you get thicker material, you, you'll move it up here because it'll give you uh, more leverage to be able to bend the material easier. Uh, if you look at the construction of this machine, this is an all steel welded body machine. Um, if you walk around the back here, You'll see it's got some truss construction in here uh, that allows you some adjustments and, and holds the machine in alignment properly. These screws here on the back allow you to move this, this beam forward and backwards to adjust for your metal thickness. As for each gauge of material you'll be using, you'll want to, to move this so that your lip is properly adjusted for that thickness of material. Um, when installing the machine, you'll want to make sure that the machine is bolted to the floor. Um, that'll keep the machine from moving around and assure that your adjustments um, always stay in tune with, the, with how you've adjusted the machine. Again, we've got you know, your clamp levers on both sides. You can, you can open and close. You, you want to make sure that when you adjust this leaf forward and backwards and up and down, that you have the same adjustments on both ends of the machine that are, that are equal with each other. Otherwise, it could cause overbending on one uh, end of your material. If you get overbending on one end of your material, it'll mean that you need to move that end of, of the, the leaf back so that it doesn't overbend. Um, you've got the levers down here also that allow you to, to pull up on it. You can use these together. Some people will like to, to push back on the counterweight and then grab the lever down here and pull up to the angle that they require. Again, we have all steel construction. Um, it's a heavy break. Uh, the last for, last for years and years, as long as you, you take care of them, you know, uh, lubricate the uh, pivot points and, and movement points properly so that you don't uh, get unnecessary wear that, that lack of, because of lack of lubrication. Okay, so we're going to make an adjustment here. If you look right, right here is our bend line right there. And then this is the edge of our breaking. We can see that there's still a fair distance between the bend line and where the material thickness is, is at. So we're going to adjust that in to match our material thickness. Okay, now we can see that our bend line and material thickness, we still need to go just a hair more it looks like. Okay, it looks like we're right there, so now we're going to screw down the lock screw so it can't move. Okay. So we'll show a couple of different bends that we can do here. We'll um, put the metal into, most times you can have a, a mark on your metal so you're going to line your marks up and then bring the, the lock down and lock it in place. Um, we'll do a 45 degree bend here first. So we'll look at the the arrow here and then this is our degrees so we're going to bring this up until the arrow meets our 45 degree mark right there now if you wanted to do multiple bends this like uh, 45 degrees you would take this lock um, and undo these here and move it up to this and then lock it in place and that way you could do multiple bends bringing that up and then you wouldn't have to keep looking at the degree marks. Okay, so we'll bring it out, unlock it, 
you can see we've got close to four or uh, about a 45 degree bend there now the thing you'd need to do is you'd want to check this with a protractor against this you might depending on the material that you're bending you may have to um, bend it a little bit more because of spring back so we'll do another bend here put it in here I'm just going to line this edge up with the front of here so it gives me a, a nice straight bend bring it down and lock it in place now we're going to do a 90 degree bend here now one of the things that's nice too about this brake is that if you have a long piece of material that you're bending and you're working inside the brake here they've got these extra handles so that you don't have to walk clear to the end of the brake on either end to be able to start bending you can just reach down right here in the center and and grab these extra handles they put in. So we can look at this and see there's probably it's close to a 90 degree but because of spring back we might have to just go a little bit extra bend on it. We unlock it and see we have a nice nice bend right there. Okay, we've already made adjustments here for the thickness of material and for the height of the material for the thickness of uh, material we have here. So you open the brake, you just insert your material to where you want to bend it at. We've got a pretty big piece here, so we'll we'll leave a fair amount sticking out here. Careful not to pinch your fingers. And then, and lock your bra brake in place. Now we've, we've got an angle gauge here, but you want to remember this is not an exact science. Everything's going to bend different be depending on the thickness of material and the type of material you're bending. You'll have different spring backs. So this will give you a range, and then if you, want, if you need an exact bend, you're going to want to check it with a protractor. So we'll bend this first one to say 30 degrees. So we're looking at our mark here and coming up. So we've got about 30 degrees right there. We'll come back down. You can see we've got about a 30 degree bend there. You can see that these uh, counterweights um, help you once they start rotating down, they, they'll help you bend the material. So you open it up and then we'll do another bend at a different angle. So we'll again bring it out about the same distance. Hold it down and lock it in place. One of the nice things is if you have a really long piece of material in here and you want to start bending from the middle here, we've got an extra set of handles here that you can get a hold of so you don't have to walk clear to the outside edge. Or if you've got a real heavy piece of material and you need some additional help bending it, one person can stand here and you can have another person in the middle um, helping to bend also. So we'll bend this one to about 45 degrees. Got about right there. Bring this back down. Bring it out and then we'll make one more at a 90 degree bend. Now if you have to make multiple bends that are the same angle, you can set your stop down here to whatever angle you want by undoing these bolts and then sliding it up against this stop and then tightening it back down again. That way you can make multiple bends of the same angle without um, having to look at the gauge. It makes it a little quicker.
Okay, so we can see we've made a, a 30 degree band, a 45 degree band, and then we've made a 90 degree band here. Now if you need to bend a, a piece in a 180 degree bend so you've got a, a nice smooth edge that's not going to cut anyone, you can take and push the material in. The, you know, you normally you'd have a mark here that you'd go by. Bring it down, lock it, and then you can take this and just bend it over as far as you can go. back around and insert it. Bend it down and you've got a nice rounded piece that won't cut anybody. And that's uh, pretty much it on our uh, JMT 10 foot 16 gauge leaf brake.